Today's topic is general embryology. We know that oocyte and sperm are formed as a result of oogenesis and spermatogenesis. Two different processes happening in the male and a female. So after the process of oogenesis, we have the oocyte and after the process of spermatogenesis, we have the sperm. And we have the uterine tube like this which will be connected to the uterus and the different parts of the uterine tube will be this will be called the interstitial part this is called the isthmus this is called the ampulla and the extremity is called infundibulum so these are the four parts of the uterine tube and you have the ovary here which will be releasing the oocyte which will be sucked up by the uterine tube and the sperm will be carried through the uterine cavity and it will reach the ampulla. So the ovum, the oocyte will be reaching the ampulla and the sperm will be reaching the ampulla and both will get fertilized at the ampulla. When we talk about the duration of pregnancy in a human being, the entire length of human pregnancy can be completed in four, 40 weeks. So the entire length of human pregnancy is 40 weeks or 280 days. This is broadly classified under two main headaches. One is called embryonic period and the other one is called fetal period. So the embryonic period occurs from the point of fertilization in the ampulla up to 8 weeks of development. So that is from the point of fertilization till 8 weeks of development. So 8 weeks can be considered as roughly 2 months. So from 3rd month onwards up to the termination of pregnancy you call it as fetal period. So the entire length of human pregnancy is classified as embryonic period and fetal period. Embryonic period occurs during the first 8 weeks of development. Now the embryonic period. Let's see what is happening during the embryonic period. The embryonic period is further classified as germinal period and the embryonic period proper. So these two periods together we call it as embryonic period. So what do you mean by germinal period? Germinal period means as the word implies it is the formation of the germ layers. We know that we have three germ layers the ectoderm, the endoderm and the mesoderm. So the formation of all three germ layers happen during the germinal period. So the germinal period includes the period from the point of fertilization up to three weeks of development. And the rest of the period that is from four to eight weeks is called embryonic period proper. So germinal period from the point of fertilization up to three weeks which results in the formation of the main three germ layers. And from 4th week to 8th week you call it as embryonic period proper. Now let's see what is happening during the germinal period. So we will move on to the first week of development. What is happening inside the uterine cavity during the first week of development. So the first week of development the major events happening are 1 the cleavage division, 2 the formation of morula, 3 the formation of blastocyst and 4 it is the implantation. So these are the major events happening during the first week of development. We know that after fertilization it results in the formation of zygote. So zygote or the fertilized ovum is very large. So in order to bring its size to a normal size of a cell it undergoes repeated division, repeated mitotic division that is known as cleavage division. So mitotic division or cleavage division is a process by which the larger cell, the larger fertilized cell will undergo a division so that it will come back to the normal sized cell. Now what is morula? So the, as a result of the cleavage division the cells undergo repeated division and it becomes two cell stage 4 cell stage, 12 cell stage, 16 cell stage and it goes on like this. So let's see how a morula is formed. So after cleavage division we will be moving on to morula. When the cells reach 12 to 16 cell stage 
the cells will be adhered to each other and it will result in the formation of a sphere. And this sphere is still covered by an outer covering called zona pellucida. So it is this zona pellucida which prevents the implantation of the zygote during its travel from the ambula to the uterine cavity because after fertilization the zygote will start traveling from the ampulla to the uterine cavity for its implantation. So if the zona pellucida is not there, it will just get implanted within the uterine tube. So it is this zona pellucida which prevents the implantation of the zygote within the uterine tube. So outer to outer covering we have the zygote and inner to it we have the cells which go on dividing uh, uh, under the process of cleavage division. And when it reaches 12 to 16 cell stage, by a process called compaction, the cells of the outer periphery will be forming an outer cell mass and this will be connected by tight junctions. There is no space between the cells. So the cells which are arranged at the periphery by a process called compaction. The process of arrangement is called compaction and the cells of the outer periphery you call it as outer cell mass which are connected by tight junctions but the cells within the inner aspect are loosely connected with enough spaces in between and this group of cell is known as inner cell mass and the cells will be around 12 to 16 cells this stage is called morula now the morula will be moving from the uterine tube and it will reach the uterine cavity once it reaches the uterine cavity, the uterine cavity will be secreting a fluid known as uterine milk. This uterine milk will start entering into the uh, developing morula. And this will start occupying the spaces between the inner cell mass cells. And these cells will be pushed to one side and these small cavities will coilish to form a larger cavity. So you have the zona pellucida like this here. You have the outer cell mass which is lying outer to it. The smaller spaces will be coalescing to form a larger cavity so that the inner cell mass will be pushed to one side. So this large cavity is now known as blastocele. This is called blastocele. So morula with blastocele, now you call it as blastocyst that is how a blastocyst is formed morula when the uterine milk enters into the morula the cells will be pushed to one side and the small cavities will coalesce to form a larger cavity known as blastocele so morula with blastocele is known as blastocyst and the number of cells in the blastocyst will be roughly 32 to 64 cells and uh, still the blastocyst will be covered by zona pellucida or else it will get implanted elsewhere. And now the point of attachment of the inner cell mass which is now known as embryoblast is called polar trophoblast. So we can just roughly name the outer cell mass in the blastocyst as trophoblast and the inner cell mass as embryoblast. Well, why we are calling the outer cell mass as trophoblast because that layer is now going to give rise to the chorion and the placenta. Trophy means nutrition so the outer cell mass is now acting as a nutritive layer and the inner cell mass is now known as the embryoblast why because it is giving rise to the embryo proper. So the point of attachment of the embryoblast to this trophoblast is called as polar trophoblast and the remaining trophoblast is known as mural trophoblast mural trophoblast so you have the polar trophoblast where the embryoblast is attached and the rest of the trophoblast is called mural trophoblast so blastocyst if you if it is asked as a short note you can say that it is nothing but morula with a cavity known as blastocele it is roughly 32 to 64 cell stage the outer cell mass is getting converted as the trophoblast which is giving rise to the formation of nutritive layer, the placenta and the chorion. And the inner cell mass is now known as the embryoblast which will be giving rise to the formation of embryo proper. Now the uh, uterine cavity is now getting ready to receive the 
fertilized ovum. So what are the changes happening in the uterine cavity? Uterine wall as we know is made up of three layers the endometrium, myometrium and perimetrium. Now the endometrium we have again three layers. What are the three layers of endometrium from within the lumen outwards you have the stratum compactum which is the innermost layer of the uh, endometrium then you have the stratum spongiosum and you have the stratum base. These are the three layers of the endometrium. Once the blastocyst is formed uh, say roughly about the fifth day of intrauterine life it will start invading the uterine wall. It will start invading the uterine wall. So what is the first change which happens uh, when it starts implantation, the first change which should happen is the disappearance of the zona pellucida. That happens by trypsin like enzyme. So, once the zona pellucida disappears, the blastocyst will start invading the uterine endometrium. It will start first invading the stratum compactum, and it is this end which will first stick onto the stratum compactum. So, this end is called embryonic pole or embryonic pole can be defined as the pole to which the embryonic embryo, uh, embryo blast is attached and the rest is called the F embryonic pole. So it is the embryonic pole which is getting attached first onto the uterine endometrium. It will start invading the uterine endometrium, it will first pierce the stratum compactum, then it will pierce the stratum spongiosum and it will get implanted. It won't go beyond this stratum spongiosum and this process starts by the seventh day of intrauterine life that is by the end of the first week it will start getting implanted but you should note that it is not a one time event it takes time for the entire blastocyst to get implanted within the endometrium so it will take roughly two to three days to complete the process of implantation so when will the implantation or where is the site of implantation Normally, the site of implantation is said to be in the upper uterine segment. We can uh, just divide the uterine cavity into an upper segment and a lower segment. So, implantation which happens in the upper segment, anywhere in the upper segment, we consider it as normal implantation. But if the implantation happens other than the upper segment, you call it as ectopic pregnancy. So the ectopic pregnancy or the abnormal implantation can be intrauterine ectopic pregnancy and extrauterine ectopic pregnancy. What do you mean by intrauterine ectopic pregnancy? Intrauterine ectopic pregnancy means it is yes within the uterine cavity but it is not in the upper segment. So anywhere in the lower segment you call it as intrauterine ectopic pregnancy. What do you mean by extrauterine? Extra uterine means it is outside the uterine cavity. So it can be in the fallopian tube, it can be within the ovary, it can be within the abdominal cavity. So all these options come under the extra uterine ectopic pregnancy. Now intra uterine ectopic pregnancy, there is a particular term given for this intra uterine ectopic pregnancy that is called placenta previa. So placenta previa is the intrauterine ectopic pregnancy. It has got four grades. So if you roughly take this as the internal os of the cervix, when the implantation happens in the lower segment, you call it as grade 1. Grade 1 placenta previa. When it reaches up to the internal os, this is the internal os, when it reaches up to the internal os, you call it as grade 2 placenta previa. When it covers the internal loss, but when the cervix is dilated, it won't be covering the internal loss. That is called grade 3 placenta previa. And when it completely occludes the internal loss, even when the cervix is dilated, that is called grade 4 placenta previa. So intrauterine ectopic pregnancy is known as placenta previa. Placenta previa alone can be asked as a short note. So there are four grades of placenta previa. Grade 1. It is in the lower segment, grade 2 reaching up to the internal os, grade 3 covering the os but on cervical dilatation it won't be covering and grade 4 it completely covers the internal os. So these are the changes which happen during the first week of development. So to summarize, the fertilized ovum or the zygote will start its travel from the ampulla to the uterine cavity 
and during this travel actually this is made possible by the contraction of the uterine tube and during this travel the cells will undergo repeated mitotic division known as cleavage division then the cells will adhere together by a process known as compaction so that it will attain the shape of a sphere and when it is 12 to 16 cell stage you call it as morula and the cells are arranged so that it forms an outer cell mass and an inner cell mass and when the uterine milk starts entering into the spaces between the inner cell mass you get a cavity formed that is called blastocele so morula with blastocele you call it as blastocyst and when the zona pellucida disappears the blastocyst will get implanted within the uterine cavity if it gets implanted elsewhere other than the upper segment you call it as ectopic pregnancy ectopic pregnancy there are two forms within the uterine cavity you call it as intrauterine and outside the uterine cavity you call it as extrauterine within the uterus that is placenta previa and outside the uterus it can occur anywhere it can be in the fallopian tube, it can be in the ovary, it can be in the abdominal cavity. So that's all about the development of fetus within the first week.